We have seen vector addition in our school days. Now we are going to see how this vector addition exercise can be translated into geological cases. If on a horizontal plane or on a planar surface, there is a vector P acting and then there is another vector Q acting, the resultant can be obtained in this manner. I can construct a parallelogram and from this point to that point I join by a line with an arrow and we say that this is the resultant. Suppose the angle between the P and the Q vector is given by theta and the angle between the resultant vector and the P vector is given by phi then we can write a number of relations. r is equal to root over p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta. Here r is the magnitude p q r also magnitude. And we can also write the angle phi is equal to tan inverse q sin theta divided by p plus q cos theta. We will not get into the deduction, but now we will take this problem into the geological cases. In geological case, we start with a horizontal plane first of all. That means assume that this green board is a horizontal plane and on that horizontal plane, I can draw the north and south directions perpendicular to that will be the east and the west geographic directions. Now I will take two vectors, stresses as vectors. Imagine this is a stress sigma 1 with a magnitude of 5 Pascal and this stress has a trend of phi 1. What is phi 1? Phi 1 is a trend of sigma 1, but that means from the geographic north direction in a clockwise movement, I can reach, if I move phi 1 angle, I will reach this sigma 1 geographic direction. Now let us take another vector here, sigma 2, say it is equal to 7 Pascal and assume that this stress sigma 2 as a vector has a trend of phi 2 angle. So, this is phi 2. How the trend is commonly shown in structural geology? From north in a clockwise direction. So, that is what I do from north in a clockwise direction this is phi 2 angle. Now, my question is how much is the resultant stress magnitude? Another question is how much is the trend of the line of action of that stress. Since both the given stresses are horizontal, I consider this green board as horizontal. Therefore, the resultant stress will also be horizontal because on horizontal plane, I am adding up two vectors as stresses. So, here if we go by this process, I can construct a parallelogram and if we do so, the resultant will look like this. So, we have to find out the magnitude of this vector given by the blue line and its trend. What is the trend of this vector? It has to be from north in a clockwise direction. So, this angle we are looking for. And we can call say this angle is equal to phi 3 or better to call it phi r. We will see how to find them out. 
Now to compare this figure with that figure, note that theta is the angle between the vectors p and q. What is the angle between the sigma 1 and sigma 2? As per the diagram, it is equal to phi 2 minus phi 1. So this phi 2 minus phi 1 is equivalent to theta of our school textbook diagram. So it is equivalent to our theta in that diagram. Now just like this vector is called p just to equate with this situation and that one I consider like sigma 2 I am considering like p and this sigma 1 vector I am considering, considering like q so that I can link with the formula. Now the resultant r is given by p square plus q square so plus 2 p q that means 2 sigma 2 sigma 1 cos theta. Theta is equivalent to this so therefore I write here phi 2 minus phi 1 and the angle phi what is the angle phi? This is the angle between the resultant and the p vector here phi is given by tan inverse tan inverse q sin theta what is q in my diagram sigma 1 sigma 1 I write this as theta this theta I am talking here or I can write also as phi 2 minus phi 1 divided by p plus q cos theta what is p in my diagram I have taken sigma 2 as p so sigma 2 plus q cos theta what is q in my diagram sigma 1 is q cos phi 2 minus phi 1. So this is our formula when I give you problem sets I will give you a problem similar to this so that you can solve that. So from here you get the phi and the r value but the problem is I want the phi r value phi r is the trend and where is phi? Phi is the angle between p and the resultant this is my p that is the resultant so this is my phi here. Now from the diagram I can see trend of r this one we are trying is equal to what from north clockwise how much I have to move to reach this this line the answer is this angle phi 2 minus phi if I do phi 2 minus phi I get this much of angle so the answer is phi 2 minus phi I repeat what is phi 2 phi 2 is the trend of sigma 2 stress and what is phi what I deduced here. So in this manner what will be the answer this is my answer in terms of magnitude of stress and this is my answer in terms of the trend and what is the plunge as I told you since all work going on a horizontal plane so therefore the plunge of capital R stress or I can call let us say sigma R stress the plunge is 0 degree it is horizontal. The problem that I demonstrated you right now a little bit variation I will make and I will demonstrate how to solve it. Imagine on a horizontal plane there are two stresses I have given sigma 1 here and there is another stress which is acting which is sigma 2. Now look very carefully say so this is the line of action of this stress and that is the line of action of that stress. So what is the fundamental difference on the previous problem in the previous problem I showed two stresses are acting like this and you worked out the resultant stress but here one is in that direction what change will happen because of that. So here this angle trend is phi 1 and this trend is phi 2 phi 1 is the trend of line of action of sigma 1 
measured clockwise from north direction and phi 2 is the trend of sigma 2 line of action measured clockwise from north direction this way. Our questions are how much is the resultant stress magnitude and what is the trend of the resultant stress. These are the two questions. So, here also since the two stresses are acting on a horizontal plane, their vector addition will also lie on a horizontal plane. So, sigma r will have a plunge equal to 0. That means, it is a horizontal line. Now, since the arrow is in this direction, I cannot readily draw the or parallelogram and draw the resultant. Instead, I have to take this down in this direction. How much length? Say this is of few centimeter, I drew y centimeter, then I have also to draw y centimeter. Stop here, mark the arrow in this way, write this as sigma 1. So, if this angle is phi 1, how much is this angle? I need to know. And as you see, phi 1 and this direction are 180 degree apart from each other. So, this geographic direction is 180 degree plus phi 1. So, in the previous problem, we started with phi 1 and phi 2, but here it is 180 degree plus phi 1 that I have to take and here phi 2 I have to take. Now, I have to construct the parallelogram. So, like this I have to draw a line here and like this I have to draw a line over there. So, where is the resultant now? The resultant will be So, you see the difference if you are not aware of this arrow direction you will put the resultant in that direction which is not at all the case the resultant is in this direction. Okay. Now, I have to take one vector equivalent to like p and this vector I can take equivalent of q and we remember the formula what is done in school what I wrote and then I erased apply those formula and find out the phi angle. What will be the phi angle coming out from those formulae? This will be the angle. From P, the resultant, this is sigma r. So, this angle is going to be the phi angle. Recollect the diagram. If I draw again, This angle is defined between the resultant and the p vector. Here I started considering this as p. So, with p this yellow line is making phi angle. So, after applying such a formula I will get the phi. Once you get the phi that is not the answer. I need to find the trend of sigma r. What is the trend of sigma r? From north geographically north direction and clockwise directions. The angle is given by this one from the geographic north this angle. How to find out this angle? In this drawing you can see that if I write trend of p vector which is our basically sigma 1 stress as a vector minus phi is equal to the trend of sigma r. Let us try to understand it within the diagram. The trend of p or sigma 1 is given by this blue angle. This is the total angle. Now, from this total if I subtract this much, how much remains is only this much. So, that is the angle between the sigma r, the resultant stress and the north direction. So, this will be the answer. When I give problem sets, I will set such problem. So, be careful. I repeat to initiate such solutions. If this is, is this the case, then one kind of solution I have done. And is this the case? 
then you have to be following this method. A variation of this can be like this. In all these cases, these are the north-south directions. Needless to mention, this is the east-west direction. So, in this way, you have to be carefully solving how the stress can be added on a horizontal plane. But this is not all. What if the plane is inclined? Problems will start. We will see it now. Now, we will take a most general case when there are two lines of action of stresses in the space and the plane that contains these two lines is not horizontal. Previously, this was horizontal and things were easy and for this problem we will use stereo net. There can be other techniques also I might demonstrate later. Imagine this is one of the lines of actions of stress. This open side is that indicating that in the up plunge direction of the line stress is acting and here is another line of action of stress like this which is also working in an up plunge direction. So, in this case the plane is here my hand and it is not horizontal. The resultant stress has to lie on the plane that contains these two lines right. So, let us see in stereo net now. So, imagine that the two lines that I showed are plotted as points in the stereo net as sigma 1 over here and sigma 2 over there. I have to find out their resultant. Our first work is to draw a grid circle that contains these two points. How to do that? Keep the stereo net fixed and move the tracing sheet slowly so that you will find one grid circle where sigma 1 and sigma 2 both fall in a single grid circle. Draw that one. And then match the north of the tracing sheet with the north of the stereo net so that it comes back to this position. So, what is this great circle indicating is the plane on which sigma 1 and sigma 2 will fall. A plane on which now if I change the sigma 1 sigma 2 positions same process will work. Okay. And we can take some magnitudes, say I am writing here sigma 1 equal to 5 Pascal, sigma 2 equal to 3.2 Pascal and I stated that in both the cases the stress acts in the up plunge direction and they act Okay. Our first work will be to find out the angle between sigma 1 and sigma 2 and that can be done using stereo net. This is one angle theta. What is the other angle between two lines? Two lines intersect or two planes intersect at two angles theta and 180 degree minus theta. If this angle is theta, the other angle is 180 degree minus theta. A stereo net question comes where is 180 degree minus theta in this diagram? If I take this angle and I take this angle, I add them up that becomes 180 degree minus theta. So, that sum of them is equal to total great circle movement in this way and that is 180 degree. So, I have got the two stress axis and the angle has been found. Now, what was done in our school days? Two vectors P and Q and the angle is theta then we found the resultant is equal to root over p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta resultant. So, in this case I have to choose out of these two one angle and have to work how to choose theta or should I choose 180 degree minus theta in our cal similar calculation. To do this I have a suggestion. Once the data is given sigma 1, sigma 2, their plunge and trends are given, 
or their attitudes are given we can place two pencils or one pencil and one pen in that manner once we place the pen and pen and pencil in that manner we can understand what is the angle is this an acute angle or the obtuse angle we can do it manually for example to explain further say sigma 1 and sigma 2 has got this kind of values plunge and trend i can give values that will match with this kind of diagram this is not and it is here so the this is the uh, trend is north and the plunge is let's say 22 in degree and what about this this is east so 90 this is south so 180 degree 100 120 130 so this is let's say 145 i just write a number here the trend is 145 and the plunge is this much let's say 12 degree in degree at the plunge values in trend this one is also in degree so now how will i place a pen and pencil and try to understand their three, three dimensional orientation imagine this is a geographic north direction okay if this is geographic north direction how sigma 1 is oriented i can orient this pen for example its trend is towards north and it has plunge of 22 degree like this from horizontal this is 22 degree but the stress acts in up plunge direction so this is my orientation i repeat this is geographic north okay and this line is making 22 degree with the horizontal and the stress is acting in up plunge direction now i will take the sigma 2 and i have to orient it if this is the north direction that is the south direction this is the east direction it is not need not be the exact geographic direction for that i need a clinometer i am not considering that i am considering this is the north so in that case that is the south direction this is the east direction and 135 145 will be between east and south somewhere here okay and then it has a dip of 12 degree like this with horizontal it makes 12 degree now i can clearly see in my diagram that this angle is the acute angle so between theta and 180 degree minus theta i have to choose the acute angle and as per this drawing this is not the acute angle rather sum of these two is the acute angle so as per this diagram as per this data set this is my acute angle i can call this as theta dash this theta dash i have to use so from the drawing i can pick up this angle that angle sum up and call that as theta dash once theta dash is obtained then i will write the resultant stress sigma r is equal to sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 cos theta dash these magnitudes 5 and 3.2 i can put here so so also here i will use theta dash is sum of these two angles i will write once i do i get the magnitude of the resultant stress now what about the trend of sigma r our next target is sigma r's attitude how to find out that in this diagram that's how we oriented we understand that this will be the resultant stress because this is one and this is two i will take between these two one as the p another as the q imagine i consider this like p vector and sigma to like q vector then apply the formula phi equal to tan inverse q sin theta by theta dash by p plus q cos theta dash p is like sigma 1 i will put the value q is like sigma 2 i will put 3.2 theta dash is what i explained right now so from here i will find the phi what is phi phi is the angle as per your school drawings between p and r so what is p here it is sigma 1 which is here so with this phi angle is made 
So what to do? From sigma 1, I have to move phi angle, whatever is coming out. Say here I move and I reach this point. Say I move here and reach this point. Then this is the plot of sigma r. You can see sigma r, the resultant vector is making phi angle with the p vector which is taken as sigma 1 here. So, I have moved the same amount phi here. Now, you can ask another question, why not move in that direction? So, for that I would request that you have taken two pencils or pen and pencil and deciding what is the sigma r direction. You can apply some logic here. Suppose I can plot in this direction also phi amount and get some plot, which one is more logical? By orienting the pen and pencil, you can decide and choose one answer. So, in this way, when the two lines of actions of stresses are there in the space and the plane that contains them it not, is not horizontal, then also using stereonet we can solve it. There is another process of solving it which I will be also explaining. We have seen a case where there are two directions of stress acting along two lines say along this line and along that line and we have found out the resultant stress. On this a little bit variation can be added up in the problem. Imagine there is a stress sigma 1, this is the magnitude and that has a plunge of theta 1 and a trend of phi, phi 1 and there is a stress sigma 2 that has a plunge of theta 2 and a trend of phi 2. So, this is the magnitude this is the plunge and that is the trend. Now, I am adding up another information say this is acting on plane 1 and this is acting on plane 2. So, these are the plane on which sigma acts and these planes have got some areas a1 and a2. What are a1 and a2? a1 and a2 are these are basically areas of planes 1 and 2. Now, my question is how much is the resultant stress in that case acting on plane 3 having an area A3 and this is the question how much is the magnitude, how much is the plunge and how much is the trend. So, how do we solve it? Here we cannot follow the process that we have done so far. We have to find out how much is the force acting in such case on plane A1. So, from here find out the F1 magnitude. We know that stress is equal to force per unit area. So, in this case sigma 1 equal to F1 per unit area. So, from here we can say F1 equal to sigma 1 A1. Basically, you have to multiply this magnitude with that magnitude and write down F1 equal to. Similarly, for sigma 2 stress, basically you have to write here sigma 2 A2. Now, what we were demonstrating with paints and making sketches, instead of stress, consider this F1 and F2 values. Find out the resultant stress FR and from FR to get into the magnitude divide FR by A3 the given area. What will come out is the magnitude of the sigma R and what about finding out the plunge and trend of the resultant stress or the resultant force that comes from the other calculations that remains the same. So, in this way one has to be alert if we are changing the planes of consideration on which the stresses are acting things will be different. 
So in the previous case, what did we do? Sigma 1, sigma 2, we considered straight away, we went to sigma r. What was implicit is that sigma 1 and sigma 2 are stresses acting on a single plane. They are of different orientations, but say they are acting on some particular plane. And on that particular plane, how much is the resultant stress sigma r? In that case, these things do not come into picture. So I will set such problems and I hope you will be able to solve them.